Welcome back to Visual Basic for Beginners series. Next, we will move on to the programming concepts. This includes data types, variables, making decisions, and creating loops. I hope you have reviewed the first two tutorials in this series, which talk about installing Visual Basic 2010 Express and uh, how to run a simple console and a Windows application. Let's start with comments. A comment is the simplest type of Visual Basic statement because the VB compiler ignores these statements. They can consist of anything you want. You can insert a comment to remind yourself why you did something or to clarify some tricky code you wrote. Often code that makes perfect sense today may mystify you tomorrow. So use comments to explain what you are thinking while you are writing the code. You can use either a single quote to start a comment or the REM or the REM keyword. Here are a few examples showing you how you can comment your code, although these are not necessarily very useful comments. So we have a comment at the end of a valid statement here, says this is a variable A, below is a variable B, etc. And here is the one using the rem keyword. The primitive or the basic data type. You work every day with many kinds of data, including text and numbers. Where you store information on your computer depends on what kind of information it is. If it is text, you probably store it in a Word document. If it is numerical values or mathematical formulas, you probably store it in a Microsoft Excel workbook or Microsoft Access database. And if it's graphics, you most likely store it in a PowerPoint presentation. By storing information in a file of an office application, you are telling the recipient of that file what type of data it contains. VB, like most other programming languages, uses a variable or a constant to represent and temporarily store data that you use in your program. A variable, on the one hand, represents data that changes. Its value varies within a program. A constant, on the other hand, represents data type that stays the same throughout your program. When you assign a value to a variable or a constant, it's of a specific type. In VB, you explicitly categorize your data or information type. For example, if you are working with text, the equivalent VB data type category is a string or a char. If you are working with whole numbers, you have several different types. Pick integer, long integer for bigger whole numbers, single or double precision for floating point types, boolean for a true or false type, and as I said earlier, char for a single character. Why different data types? We need different data types to write efficient programs. For example, integer arithmetic is faster than floating point type. Also, the memory required by one type may be less than the other. Rules for naming variables. The variable name must begin with a letter or an underscore and cannot contain any periods or mathematical operators and must not be the name of a visual basic keyword. Here are a few examples. Yearly underscore cost is perfectly legal a variable here starting with an underscore even though it is legal but it's not advised. Avoid underscores at the beginning of your variable names. This one contains the pound sign in the middle of the variable name so it is not legal. The dollar sign is not allowed at the beginning of a variable name again. Declaring variables. Data that you want to store in a program is often of a specific type. For example, the whole number 12 is an integer data type and the text hello there is a string data type. When you assign data to a variable, you will want to tell Visual Basic what type of data you have. 
to formally indicate this you need to use a declaration statement declaration statements for variables usually start with a variable name followed by the as keyword and then the type of that variable and optionally its initial value let's look at a few examples on that statement on the first statement you are declaring three variables x y z they are all of the integer type on the next line you are declaring a as an integer type but while you are declaring it you are also assigning a value to it you are initializing that variable the next one is of the type double after that you have a one of the type string and so forth and then we have a couple of statements following that uh, which will print those variables here is a list of keywords we already looked at some of them integer module string long double those are all keywords in visual basic make sure you don't try using those names as variable names here is a list of arithmetic operators and uh, there is no surprise here we have the addition subtraction multiplication division operators here is the exponentiation operator and one after that is the mod or the modulus operator I have a few examples coming up on the next page on how examples of assignment statements on the first statement I am taking the current value of C adding one to that and assigning the result to A on the next line I am assigning a result of this multiplication to E and the result of the division to DA here's an example of how you can use the mod operator A mod B which will give you the remainder of that division so if you divide 41 by 10 the, re the remainder is 1 so that's what the mod operator would give you here is a simple example and uh, you know you may want to try this example out just copy all the code put it inside main and try running your application I'm declaring a couple of variables gallons and liters both of them are double the current value of gallons is 10 and then I want to convert that to liters so I multiply gallons by 3.7854 which is the conversion factor and the result is going to be stored in the variable liters and then using the right line statement I'm printing this one out so the result of this would be something like 10 gallons equals so many liters again I suggest you try this example we have relational operators and we will see the use of these operators in the next tutorial when you are using the if statements to make decisions for example you may want to say if a is less than B then do something otherwise do something else so here are those relational operators less than greater than less than or equals greater than or equals exactly equals and not equals a few examples of the use of these relational operators so if you want to print is X greater than Y and in this case since X is 10 and Y is 5 the answer is going to be true X less than Y is going to be false X not equals Y is going to be true and if you want to see what the result of these other statements would be we also have the logical operators and and or which I will demonstrate uh, on the next slide logical operators here X is 10 Y is 5 A is 3 and B is 4 the first question I'm asking is is X greater than Y and at the same time A greater than B in this case the result of this expression is going to be true if both of these questions will give you yes as an answer obviously that's not the case so that statement is going to return a false on the other hand if you ask if X greater than Y or A greater than B meaning if one of them is true which is in this case is true so in this case the first one is true the result of the whole expression is true that's the difference 
between using the end operator or an OR operator. Okay, so that was a quick introduction to variables, data types and assignments. Next, we have the if statement and the select case statements. And there are many more tutorials coming up on the topic of Visual Basic .NET. Please visit my website. It contains tutorials on many other programming languages like Java, C Sharp and PHP. Thank you for listening.